So now we've got the procedure in place for the chi-squared hypotheses test, or the goodness of fit hypotheses test. We can now look at how we can use it to test whether some of our known distributions are appropriate models for given situations. Okay, so firstly looking at the goodness of fit hypotheses test or chi-squared test done on um, to see whether something follows a binomial distribution. Okay, so we need to use our knowledge of the binomial distribution to be able to establish what our expected frequencies should be. Now we can get two scenarios arising here for a binomial. We can have a situation where the probability for the binomial may be known or given. Um, or we might have a situation where it may need to be estimated from the observed values. Okay, uh, and depending on which of these two it is will affect our degrees of freedom. So if P is not estimated by calculation, then our degrees of freedom is as it was in earlier examples, number of cells take away one. But if P is estimated by calculation, that actually adds another constraint to our values, okay, because um, the fact that we've estimated P means that we now have two sort of summary bits of information about our data. We know what the cells add up to. That's our first constraint. But we also, if we know what the p-value is estimated from our values, then from that information, we could work backwards to work out another value in our table. So it leads to this second constraint. So you just need to remember to adjust your degrees of freedom down by one if you have estimated p uh, from the observed data. Uh, the method for estimating P is you can use this formula or alternatively you can just work out the mean of your table. Okay, so work out your mean. You can do that on your calculator if you want. And because we know for a binomial that the expected value of the mean is equal to n times P, then if you work out your mean and divide it by n, that will give you your probability. That's effectively what this is up here. If you think about the sum of r times f all divided by n, uh, that is your mean um, of a frequency table, and then you've divided it by n to get the what p is equal to. Okay, so um, they're both equivalent to each other, but if you find it easier just to work out the mean and then divide it through by n to get your p-value, then um, you can do it that way. Okay, so we'll go on and look at example one um, in the next video.